You are now listening to Out of the Blank. Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Boomer. You got to tell me pronounce your last name. Uh, Perrault. Perrault. Is yep. that a, what is that, Italian? Uh, it's actually French, but the, the proper way to say it is Perot. That's the French way, but no one ever says it like that. So, Boomer, you have to have – you probably had a nickname in high school, right? Like the Boom? Uh, ironically, my nickname uh, was Rob Dog, which – What? Uh, it's, uh, it's from fifth grade, which didn't really – I actually had like eight nicknames. Uh, the one that stuck the most was – Rob Dog, one of my friends just gave me in fifth grade, and uh, that was the one that uh, most people call me. But yeah, I was getting called uh, like Beto from that was one of my Spanish names. Uh, there, there's so many that just don't make any sense. But Nobody went with the boom. No, I, I didn't. Well, Boomer, so it's actually not my legal name, uh, but that's what everyone called me when I was much younger, and then it kind of went away. And uh, people call me Rob, which is my my real name. But then uh, Boomer came back again uh, when I turned like 20. So there was like uh, my teenage years. Uh, no one called me that. But before that, that's what I uh, went by. And now that's what I go by. So what do you do professionally, Boomer? I service vending machines. I, I don't really have an official job title, but I essentially go around installing vending machines, uh, fixing them, just whatever uh, I have to do for the company I work for. Now, that's obviously not a very, like, I guess, fun job, I would say, just because you kind of have to go to multiple different places, or do you find it like you can just go on autopilot and kind of go to every location? Is it fun? Uh, I don't, I can't see anyone could say they would enjoy my job. But it's a lot, it definitely is a lot of driving. And I say I prefer that versus sitting in an office. I can never, you know, be the nine to five guy in a cubicle wearing a suit and tie. So compared to that, I enjoy it. But uh, no, I don't imagine anyone that has a job similar to mine. Well, you have, a, you have a special job. I mean, the reason I can get two bags of Funyuns out of a machine because of some accidental, like them being too pushed together is amazing. That just makes people's day. You have to realize you're making people's day technically on like a daily basis. You decide to push those chips in a little too far. Someone hit Z6 or something. Next thing you know, they're getting two bags. Yeah, I mean, funny enough, actually, my friend and I, uh, started doing stuff like this when I, I think sixth grade we started putting vending machines in stores around town to make some money or g- gumball machines and uh, at the ice rink uh, there was always little kids games going on and so all their siblings would be there and they would just terrorize us every time we tried to service the machine and uh, we'd end up giving away free, either free money or free gumballs just to get them away from us. So uh, I guess I was doing that even back in the day. So wait, you wait. How, how, so how did you get your start in this? I mean, if you're starting back then, technically, like were you doing what the kids did back in the day, like going around to the checking the change slots or like robbing the machine, or were you actually servicing them, like putting stuff in them? Like where did you get the supplies for it? You didn't make your own gumballs, did you? No, we um bought machines online we, you know we we bought everything like anyone else would um that does uh, that has a job like that you know you buy them in bulk so it's cheaper we would go into stores ask them if we could put the machines in they get a percentage we actually gave a percentage to charity and uh you know it was just a just a way to make some money my friend and I that did this we were we were the kind of kids that were going around asking people if we could shovel for them just doing whatever we could to make a few bucks here and there so that that was our our big one. That I mean, that's interesting, man, because that's something like you were an entrepreneur from like the start, basically. If you think about it. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I grew up in a pretty fortunate situation. So, my my dad's an entrepreneur, and I think I kind of had some of that instilled in me. But because I was in a fortunate situation, uh, there was a certain point in time where 
I kind of lost that drive. So I became pretty lazy, but uh, I, I definitely, definitely had some of that growing up. So what types of stuff did your dad do like entrepreneur wise? Did he try and influence you at all? Uh, no, he, he would never try to influence me, but um, he was doing similar stuff. Uh, I know when he was much, much younger uh, before I, I was even born, you know, he, he started out, uh, I don't want to say started out because I don't know if he did anything before this, but uh, before I got on to bigger and better things, he was uh, doing the same thing that I did with the gumball machines, but he was doing arcade games, which were obviously huge uh, back in the day. So uh, I kind of, I'm not where he is now, but I kind of took a similar path in, in that route unintentionally. Do you think like if I had to ask you, what are some tips for a vending machine, maybe like hack it? Is there any types of stuff you could do to hack a vending machine? Because I hear people like if you did a certain code or something, get something for free. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I could not tell you. I know I know a lot of the smaller machines, though, like the gumball ones. Um, a lot of them have universal keys. So if, if you have a key, uh, you could probably get into some of them. I'm about to go down to my local Walmart and open it up. Yeah, there you go. Get all the gold balls <laughs> you want. Dude, all right, so there's actually this trick I learned at this uh, local grocery store. They have these giant size gumballs, like the size of fruit. They're called mega fruits. Well, they're so big for the vending machine. Like if you turn it right and you turn it at an angle, it gets the door latched open and it just, they all start flowing through because they're all so packed in there. So you're getting like, I got like 12 of them with like just 50 cents and I was just walking out with like pockets full of them. Yeah, like, you're, you're, you're all about these vending machine hacks. Dude, I'm telling you, this is like a childhood thing. I was all about this. I mean, I was like trying to figure out if I shook it a certain way. I mean, just recently, I put in some money into a vending machine to get a bag of Cheetos. And next thing I know, it got stuck. I was like, who is the son of a bitch that did this to me? I was like, I thought my life was over. I was sitting there hitting the machine, trying to get it, like tip it over, rock it. Do you get a lot? Do you have to deal with a lot of like vandalism to the machine? Uh, not, not really. Uh, I, I install, I install a lot. So, um, like I know, I know with a lot of those bigger vending machines, uh, the companies that, uh, own the products that go inside, put a lot of them in. So I, I, I install a lot. So if I had to ask you one question about what is your passion? Like, what do you want to pursue as like a career? Do you want, you don't want to continue working this, do you? No, not at all. So the, my, my goal is, well, I guess we'll start from the very beginning. So a few years ago, I was in a pretty serious relationship. Uh, I thought it was gonna, you know, last, and it clearly did not. And I did not take the breakup. Well, um, I got pretty depressed and nothing I did really would get me out of my funk. And again, this was maybe four or five years ago. Um, I think four. And I just one day, I don't even remember what I did, but I went out of my way to do something kind for someone. And even it was only for like 10 minutes, but it made me feel really good. Um, so I started doing more and more acts of kindness and it's not like I never did anything before, but I never really at this level. Yeah. And like, it just not, not as much like the consistency wasn't there o around the same time. I heard about a study. Uh, they were talking about it on the radio that was done where they interviewed a bunch of suicide survivors and a lot of them said that if someone had just smiled, just a stranger had smiled and said hello to them the day of their attempt, they don't think they would have went through uh, with their attempt, which is crazy to think that just a smile or saying hello to someone can literally save someone's life. Yeah. You know the most famous case of that, right? Like where that comes from? Kyle Hines, you know that guy? Yeah, Ke uh, Kevin. Yeah, yep. well, the guy that jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge, he literally, yep. I watched his little uh, documentary thing he wrote about suicide and what he does now, like, to help, like, get the word out there. Like, it's this thing that we need to, like, be more open to people. And he was talking about, like, I'm 
sitting here crying on the bus and nobody's even looking at me and giving me the time of day. If someone would have just hi said hi to me, I wouldn't have even stepped off the bus and did the jump. And it's like, you hear that, that makes you want to start talking to people more. That makes you want to get motivated out there. I mean, I was taking classes for psychology, dealing with mental health, like listening to all these things that people consider disorders. And some of them, there are serious mental illnesses out there, I think, that people do need help with, especially when it comes with depression. But I think when it comes to ADHD, things of this sort, like things I can suffer from, like I have ADHD, the fact that they need to be medicated for it. There's other outlets and other ways to do that. If you promote a positive energy, you are going to create a positive environment for that person where like if, you know, if they have something as serious or severe schizophrenia, like that's something they can't help. But if you sit there and just shove medication in their face, you can find ways to help them feel like they're not just being fed pills all day long or their whole life. Yep, exactly. Um, in my, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professional, but just in my opinion, uh, the medication route should always be last resort. Um, and yeah, Kev Kevin Hines is, you know, arguably the biggest name and biggest person behind the whole suicide prevention uh, side of mental health and really just pushing that. But uh, anyway, yeah, so I was doing my own acts. I heard that and it always stuck with me. And then June of 2017, I was just driving in my car. Don't remember where I was going, but literally in the snap of a finger, the whole idea, this whole idea of encouraging people to perform kind acts, share them on social media to really get more positivity out there and incentivizing them just came to my head. So I called up my buddy. I told him about my idea. He was on board. And later that year, uh, November or December, we started what is now One A Week. Uh, that, that's the name of the unofficial organization, I'll say, just the number one a week. And like I said, we promote positivity and mental health through good deeds. So we have our social media pages. We encourage people to perform at least one kind of act every week and share them with us, whether it's our Facebook or Instagram page. And then we link up with companies to sponsor gifts to give out to people, which one is, like I said, and incentivizes them to do more good, but it's also a way for us to give back and just really keep that circle of giving going. And we officially started that January 1st of last year, 2018. And thus far, which we're just over a year and a half in, we've had uh, on Instagram alone, uh, right around 4,600 uh, posts shared with us, which is pretty awesome. It's more than we thought we would have at this point. Do you think, like, what do you, why would you think, like, if you had to kind of answer, what is the main problem that people are dealing with that make them get to a point where they have to pick on others? What would you say is the biggest influence? I say technology. Uh, are you ta are you referring to uh, like bullies? Why people bully people or not just bullying? I think that ever since technology has came about or at least become on such a platform it is now, where, I mean, you have literally the w internet at your fingertips. It gives everyone a voice to voice an opinion that they do not think too much about. It literally just pops right in their head and they decide to tweet it thinking it's going to be funny. Next thing you know, you're hearing something about somebody, somebody's getting called fat, somebody's getting called something, or somebody's saying that's the shittiest thing. Like it's, it's an outlet for people to put other people down. It's just a resource tool. Oh, it's um, what the internet has done, which first I'll say uh, social media and just the internet overall is a positive, but yeah, we can connect together. Yep. But with, with most things uh, there's always some sort of give and take. And so uh, I don't think there's any debate that social media has caused an increase in uh, mental health issues and, uh, you know, suicide attempts. And I think part of it is that there's no, well, I want to, I want to say no consequence, but uh, there, the consequences are much less of saying something hateful 
on a keyboard versus saying something hateful to someone's face. It's a lot easier and nothing. But there's no consequence technically to it. I mean, you, you can post something and then get it taken down, but it's way easier to tweet something about Donald Trump or whoever's pissing you off or just whatever gets you upset and not say it to their face. You find that if you give that person the same situation, but to say it to somebody's face, they won't do it. They'd rather be behind a screen or something. I think that's where the technology kind of takes the wrong route which it kind of brings up the question, like technology is a benefit, but at the same time, is it just the way people, are people hard, hardwired to be like this? Or do you think it's just how the world is shaped right now? Uh, I think it's, it's definitely how the world is shaped because I, I don't, I've never seen, I mean, I'm sure there are, but the, whenever I see a baby, you know, they're always laughing, always smiling. Um, as they grow old, they're able to walk and talk a little bit. For the most part, they're always friendly with their kids. I think hate and negativity, for the most part, again, there's always uh, outside cases, but for the most part, I think it's it's learned. Whether it's in your household, you see the way your parents might uh, interact with each other, the way someone in your household interacts with you. Maybe you see it in school, uh, on, on TV, now on the internet. Uh, I definitely think hate and negativity is something that is learned. And as good of a thing social media is, like you said, it's made us, uh, made it possible for us to connect. It also is an outlet for people who are having their own issues, or just angry at life. It's an outlet for them to lash out at someone else to, uh, cause that, that's what they say. A lot of bullies are, you know, hurt people, hurt people. They're hurting themselves. So they lash out to either make themselves feel better or want someone else to feel their pain and hurt. Yeah, it's uh, the so, concept so of um, the pyramid of screaming or chain of screaming, whatever you want to call it, where you're yelling at the person below you, that person yells at someone below them, and then it keeps on going until you know it does a full cycle. And I think like it happens a lot. I mean, I, I, I stop myself every single day uh, from – getting super super frustrated with people or just getting short with people just because i'm in a hurry like you have 45 items at um 12 items or less and i'm sitting here with one and i have to wait on you i'm i'm gonna be impatient but then i just stop myself in my tracks and go is this really gonna matter 10 minutes from now is this really going to matter i mean the fact that i can see like i take take today for example something a lot of people consider to be a fungus or disgusting or in a bad way. Mushrooms, natural growing mushrooms. I saw them, a bunch of them growing on the side of the road when I was driving by. First thing in my head I thought was, some dude's going to take that, eat that, and think it's going to be some type of stoner trip. Second, I thought that is a perfect representation for life. It's literally what people consider to be stupid, what consider to be ugly, what consider to be disgusting or a bacteria, trying to grow and trying to do something beautiful with as much power as it has. And I'm like, once you think of that, like easily I could have just, that I pulled a spiritual experience out of nothing. But I'm like, it, it's a great representation for people because I've podcasted with so many people now and I, I enjoy talking and getting their thoughts on life at least. Like, what's it like? And everyone comes down to the same topic. Like, we need to talk about what's going on in the world. I'm like, what do you mean? Some people say global warming. Some people say these types of things like changes in technology. But most people hit on the basis that everyone's walking around nowadays with a mask. Nobody takes the time to really understand or know one another anymore. You know, that's how six 60% of relationships end is because the person ends up being someone that you didn't marry. Like you marry them and they're not the same person. Like it's, it's difficult. We're, we're all experiencing trauma. I mean, we all live, we, we, none of us have perfect days. You know, Kim Kardashian doesn't have a perfect day. You know, it's, we all have this type of pain, but we choose to take it out on others. And I think that's a problem we need to fix. Yeah. And like you said, with you know, people putting on a mask, uh, that's another thing that social media does uh, because people, especially on Instagram with filters now, people are only showing uh, an edited version of them, but in their best moments. Uh, so people see that and they think, oh, this person must have a great life. I'm sitting over here and my life sucks. Uh, and then it, you know, makes you spiral into a state of depression where meanwhile, that person that put up that awesome picture where they look perfect, flawless, 
uh, they're saying the same thing about someone else because they know what they are putting out there isn't their real life. So, um, yeah, you know, like, like you said, it's, it's really just about being unapologetically yourself and the more people that are willing to do that and put their real selves out there, not just their best moments, uh, the better uh, people will be from a mental aspect. Well, it's also like, I don't really edit my podcast either. The bums, the uts, all this stuff that people consider to be like a waste of time or just like a waste. I don't, I consider that real conversation. I'm giving you everything, the nitty gritty. If you want to talk about something you're passionate about, even if it's about politics, I'm willing to shoot, shoot the shit on it. But at the same time, like I know as much as I know, and I've only experienced as much as uh, the experience I get myself. And I can't truly ever believe in something if I haven't experienced it myself. That's a fact. You know, seeing is believing. But at the same time, hearing people talk and hearing people go on about trauma they've had, uh, experiences they've had, passions they have, and how they're not able to pursue them, or just anything they're super interested about, that gets me interested because I'm like, wow, that's something I never even thought of. You're getting more perspective on life. When Like, I've had moments where I'm sitting there like, I'm not a giant believer in uh, a higher power. I'm not uh, whatever religious at all, but I'm sitting there looking just out my window and like, it's, this is like the middle of October. Like it seemed like the, the chill a little bit on the window, you know, when you see the frost and first thing that pops into my head was those, those winter days or those winter. Yeah. Something like that by Robert Frost. Like this poem, and he talks about the cracks of the wind. And I'm reading it, and I'm like, this is why people read books, because it's giving them this type of experience I'm having right now while sipping a coffee. Like I'm on my deck, it's completely silent, just seeing it crackle through. And I'm like, this is beautiful. Like this is this isn't God, but this is this is where I could see where people is would would consider this to be God. Like the world is beautiful. It's got this hard ass exterior shell. And we choose to just look at the outside layer, but you got to truly find the beauty within, just like with all people. That pissed off person in the store, why don't you sit down and talk to him, see why he got pissed off in the first place. Yeah, he might tell you to fuck off or something, but at the same time, you're understanding him. You're, you're taking the time to learn. Nobody wants to take the time to learn anymore. I think if there was going to be any major changes we should do is we should focus on ourselves. I mean, forget the next iPhone 30 and just let's, let's dedicate a little bit of time just to understanding, you know, one another. I mean, me and you live on the same earth. We share technically the same, we share the same planet. And guess what? I didn't know anything about you before this podcast. I knew nothing. I was completely oblivious to it. I don't really like it when people send me information on themselves. Yeah, it's good I'm able to pronounce your name correctly. That's about it. But I want to hear it from you. I want to tell, tell you tell me what you want to tell, what you want the, the trueness to be. like Because you know deep down what's true, and you know what you're telling me. So you could your day job could be something like, making funyuns but you decided to tell me it was soda machine vending or vending machines just working on those that's fine and if that's what you want me to know you as and that's okay but i feel like once we just start displaying ourselves in another manner why don't we just save that for video games because that's really what it is yeah no you're right and um like you said with you know getting past that ex- the hardened exterior um I said I thought most of hate and negativity was learned. Um, All those people that are now negative, I think you can just as easily learn how to be positive and see something in that beautiful light. Uh, The thing is, it takes practice because when I did go through that breakup I mentioned earlier, uh, I really started, for the first time ever, really started to self-reflect and I realized I was that negative person. I always saw the bad in things or, you know, just everything seemed more negative. And the way I changed that was every time I had a negative thought come to my mind, I would immediately, once I recognized it, I would immediately switch it with a positive one. And it seems simple, but the thing is, there were some days I would have to do that two to 300 times in a day. And I would constantly be switching this out for maybe six straight months before I really started to notice any change. 
and you just, but you keep doing it, you keep doing it. Uh, and it can be exhausting as simple as it seems, but again, you just keep at it. Um, keep thinking positive every time something happens and you'll see less and less and less those negative thoughts come and more and more your thoughts are natural, naturally more positive. You'll see the good in a situation. If you have a challenge in front of you, you'll see it as something you can conquer versus how hard of a challenge it's going to be. So it is something that can be learned and I'm walking proof, but it is something that does take work. It's not easy. Now, if you explain this to somebody who's going through hard times, like you, you'll see them, their face just like they'll roll their eyes because they yep. don't believe it. What? How can you explain it to a way for them to understand? I mean, you're being relatable by saying you had a relationship experience. Like I said, be as open as you want to be. Don't if you feel like there's prying going on, you can stop. But with you know, dealing with a hardship like that, which a lot of people do go through and they feel like there's no way out. Like you being able to say that and tell people out there, someone's listening and going to be able to relate to that. Someone's going to be like, oh my God, I'm going through that right now. And it, you're only, when you become relatable, when you show your, your pure self, your, the, the, the human form, we all want to display this character, this act like that's jim jim works a nine to five in his office he goes home doesn't do anything just goes to work goes home has lives a happy life happy wife happy family i'm like but i want to know what jim's into jim's probably into some freaky shit like jim probably mm -hmm. like has like killer thoughts or jim might be a psycho murderer you never know until he shoots up the grocery store but i'm like let's take the time to get to know jim because if jim's the guy that's going to shoot up a store i don't want to push him over the edge by accidentally leaving like some cut up grass cl uh, clippings on his yard you know what i mean i want to make sure that that never happens i want to make sure that like he can talk and express himself out i want to make sure if he needs to get help he, he gets help you know what i mean once you understand people better you have a whole nother aspect of life, but everyone sees themselves as the most important thing in the world. That's not wrong, but it's not the critical thinking. You have to look at the big piece of the puzzle here. We're all pieces trying to fit. Why are you going to try and knock someone else or cut someone else's puzzle piece just to make yourself fit in a spot that it's not meant to be? Yeah, and I think the hardest part about getting someone to understand what I just said is when you are in those moments, like at my worst, someone could have said what I just said. And like you said, I would have rolled my eyes because you just, when you're in a state of mind that isn't your best, you, you don't want to hear anything positive really. Um, unless it's what you what you want to hear a anything else uh, it doesn't matter to you so I, I couldn't really tell you how to how to get through to those people because I, I don't know if it's necessarily possible unless you can be so relatable and inspiring to them or they are willing to let someone in uh, other than that I, I don't know if it's really possible in certain situations when people are at their lowest do you see society or people in general changing uh, with the more like bad, tragic stuff that's going on? Because the only times there's really ever been a, a complete society change, and it's usually pretty brief, is when we face some type of world threat or terroristic attack. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say yes. It's obviously hard to know, but you know, I've been in this kindness, mental health, positive field for a couple of years now and it definitely seems like more and more people with influence and a following are getting behind it starting to do their part and i think a lot of it has to do uh with everything that's been going on the last few years uh specifically in this country with all the shootings and whatnot and just even though we might be as divided as we've been in a long time um with everything going on in, in the white house it's, um, I think that's kind of how you start to come together. You know, you have to, sometimes you have to break something down to build it back up. So I think we're starting to see that because people are starting to feel like, even though it's not 
their fault. They don't want to take blame. They are starting to take responsibility in trying to be the fix. Um, for, for example, this, the El Paso challenge, you know what that is? Have you heard I of it? I have no clue. I'm guessing uh, it's something with hot sauce. No, it's, uh, well, it's, so they had the shooting in uh, El Paso um, the other day, and a kid, just an 11-year-old boy, decided, I think his mom tweeted it out, which is how it went viral, but he said he was going to do 22 random acts of kindness in a day and called it the El Paso Challenge, and it's taken off, and there's been a lot of um, celebrities, you know, influencers on social media that have taken part uh, want to do it themselves, but also to encourage their millions of followers to do it too. And one, it's awesome that this 11 year old boy started this and it's taken off as much as it has, but it's great that these, like I said, these people with a big following and these people that have such an influence on other individuals are taking a part instead of just saying, Oh, you know, that's not the field I'm in. I, you know, I'm just here to do what I do on Instagram, make my money. No, like they're taking the responsibility to put some good in the world. Be and, a leader, not a follower. Yep. And th that, I think that's really what it takes because today more than uh, ever, at least since I've been alive, because of social media, just people with a big following have so much influence on their followers so if they just start putting out a good message, not just putting out a good message, but showing it through their own actions, it's, um, I think that's going to do a lot of good uh, going forward. I think that when you see it, like you said it yourself, like an 11-year-old that was able to do this, I say that's how people look at it one of two ways. They see it as it's an 11-year-old, so they're not going to take him seriously in doing that. It's like, oh, of course he did that. He doesn't understand how the world works. Or they take it like, wow, an 11-year-old can you know, do this knowing what the world is like probably he's completely oblivious to what the real world is being at 11 years old but he saw a serious situation he heard about it he you know he was he reacted in the complete opposite way of that for every action there is a reaction and whether it's positive or negative but this kid heard about a terrible shooting and decided to create a challenge over it that's like you can't tell me that people like people there aren't people out there that are going to aspire to be leaders i think more people would be leaders if they didn't feel pushed down or threatened by what they call mean world syndrome where the media everything displays this bad sense of how the world is i'm like it's not like that though if you actually look up mean world syndrome uh, it's a it's a fact that you know, there's media that display bad news like all the time it's always been around okay there's always been murder there's always been shootings but it's never had a platform as much as social media has taken it to where it can get out there so everything you're turning on the news every five minutes it's another terrible story another terrible story and you're just like shit man i'm just trying to enjoy my bowl of frosted flakes and i'm like you can't even do that anymore yeah and i'm like it's so simple to fix this like start doing stuff that you want to be doing as long as it doesn't affect other people, if it doesn't hurt anybody, why are you going to step on the throat of somebody else to get to where you want to go? Because it's, that's what you have to do. That's not what you have to do. It's called that option is given to you. You can choose to, you know, sabotage everybody in your line of work to get to the top, do what all the CEO business people do, or you can do it the way that's probably the moral way. And, do it yourself. If it if it if so, if someone steals the opportunity from you, then let that be on them. But your time will come. You have something out there for you that you're meant here to do. You just got to figure it out. Yeah, and uh, I'm assuming you know who Gary Vaynerchuk is. Yeah, yeah. I th he's one of the guys who's really leading the charge on not having to tear other people down to build yourself up. You know not step on other people's feet because uh, he's obviously uh, very, very wealthy. He's, you know, purebred entrepreneur. He's done everything himself, but he's preaching, you know, you can be kind and do this. You don't have to be a dick like people say Steve Jobs was. You don't have to 
for fear in people. You could do this by encouraging people, being positive and kind. And uh, like I said, he, he's one of those guys that's making a huge difference in the world in, in a positive way. Yeah, like he, right, I mean, he tweets out stuff like, "Can I be a part of your morning commute?" Like, he's he's interested in knowing people. He he's, he's not losing the a lot of what the popular like popular I guess celebrities do. Like, they lose the aspect of who they are. They get all the money, the wealth, and they totally forget about this. Like, this guy like started from just working at a, his father's liquor store and decided to turn it into a like a company, like a, he, like using the internet and everything. And next thing you know, he's doing an advertising agency. Like, he's helping hundreds and hundreds of companies and just sparking out there. And then all he's doing now is just trying to help others too. Like you hear that, you hear like Bill Gates, like how he's so like giving all his money to charity all the time. Like he has so much of it. Everyone's like, why do you keep making more? You can just stop. He's like, no, cause I enjoy creating. I enjoy what I do. I don't care about the money aspect of it. I care about seeing how far we can take technology. Like they're, they're known as innovators, these people. I'm like, they're not innovators, they're people. They just found an aspect or an outlet that they're good at to promote it. We all have this inside of us. We all have this wantingness to help the human race. No one wants to self-sabotage it. And I can tell you, when people are like, how can a terrorist blow somebody up or do this type of thing? It's because they're sparked with hatred and how pissed off they are at the world. Like, it's, it's not a fun place, but we make it not a fun place. We don't, we choose to treat each other like shit. And you think of the world as being bad. It's not the world, it's people. We have an, I, I tell everyone, we have an aspiration to be great. Sadly, we all suck. Everyone on this planet sucks. Me, you, I'm, no offense, but it's, 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 but we have an aspiration to be great. What you're doing right now is great. What you're doing is you're, you're changing that. But we all naturally choose to, do this because we're built on a rocky foundation where this country everything there's so much hate involved when you're around it all the time it's your environmental influence like there's so many lies that we don't know about so many secret stuff probably going on behind our heads that would just make us snap and it's you know it's not an insult to say you suck because you're not choosing the sucky road you're choosing to be the best you're choosing the your best option because you experienced trauma you were like i'm tired of the world giving me shit i'm going to decide to fight it in a positive way and you started this 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 social media platform you started this like business you you got this thing going you got i mean just seeing the followers increase whether it's now or just once a day like it doesn't matter if you get one follower a day it just keeps on going it's still growing you're still affecting a large amount of people and that's got to bring you such joy in your heart dude oh yeah and just compared to a lot of other people in just the grand scheme of things it's such a small amount, but for me to be able to do just uh, just what I've done, the small amount, it's just so inspiring and motivating to do more and come out with more ideas for ways to not only reach people, but reach people and try to really change their lives, even if it's in a small way or some a much greater way. And if I'm able to save some lives, even say then, you know, if I could save one life by whether it's my own act of kindness or inspiring someone else to perform an act of kindness for an individual thinking to take their life or just someone seeing some of my content, um, you know, if I could save one person's life, uh, that, that, that's all I would need to, to do to make my life a success in my eyes. You feel like you'd be accomplished. Like that's 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 your goal. You just want to be able to affect one person out there. And let me tell you, with having a podcast, with having this type of stuff out there, that like for me, there might be a, a million people that listen to this. There might be nobody that listens to this. It doesn't matter because someone will come across it one day, hear something, find it interesting, and next thing you know, that changed their life. They decide I can do that. Like it's an it's an obtainable thing. I've lost people to suicide. I've you know, I've lost close friends. I've seen it how, how it goes. I've been in like depressive states myself. You know, depression is a part of life, and that's because we choose it to let it be. We let it in affect us in such a bad way. We see a rainy day, and we see, uh, well, the world's miserable. I might as well be miserable. 
how about you look at the rain and go, damn, look how beautiful that like that is coming from the sky right now. Like it's changing your perspective on things. Well, so many people don't do it anymore. I mean, you have is it? It's called the Giving Back Podcast, right? Uh, no, that that's actually a, a different uh, podcast I, I've been on. But you you mostly go on to people's podcasts besides doing your own, right? Just to kind of help them out and get them towards their goals, like you're doing for me. Uh, yeah, like I, I go on, um, you know, similar to the situation, someone was looking for guests and I come on and, you know, spread my message. My, my podcast I have is called unapologetically me, a mental health podcast where I have people on who have either a mental illness, a uh, physical disability, or just anyone that can speak on mental health and they give their best tips, uh, for people that might be in a similar situation. Like, for example, I just dropped an episode today uh, who I, I spoke with a mom who has a daughter with cerebral palsy. And she just kind of explained her story and just gave us a look into the mental stresses that come with being a mom of a child with special needs like that. So, um, th you know, th that's another way, uh, I've actually gotten more feedback from the podcast than what I do on my social media pages, encouraging acts of kindness, just because you're being more relatable by being exactly. able to talk. I mean, exactly. people hear your voice. They're like, Oh, it's not just some stupid meme you made up. It's not just some motivational quote he took from somewhere. I'm actually hearing it from the man himself. Yep, exactly. And uh, for like, I might have someone who is a mom of a daughter with cerebral palsy, and she might be able to take away something, something great from that episode. And, you know, I have people that have all different kinds of physical disabilities, mental illnesses, uh, whatever. I had someone on that used to be a news reporter, and that's not something you would ever really relate to mental health, but we, she talked about how you kind of lose yourself in being obsessed with getting the best story and how stressful it can be. Um, so I, I put episodes out that I try to be able to relate to as many people as possible. So again, like you said, with your podcast, if there's just one person that can listen to that and get some value out of it, then it's worth it. Dude, let me tell you something. I, I believe what you're doing out there, more people are going to click onto it, man, for sure. I think it's a fact that you know, people got to see that there's people out there willing to change the world and put that in there. And they're like, well, if they can do it, then I can do it. Next thing you know, this is going to be what we can, what people consider rare, that people are diving into helping others and doing these random acts, whatever you want to call them. It's going to be start being a normal thing if we start making it a normal thing. Like if you don't even ask for a, you're welcome when you hold the door open. I still like that though. But it's the fact that like, I, I, you, you just you just have to you have to be the start like there were people that innovated the world by starting off somewhere you have to do that you have to get out there and get things rolling because once the ball starts rolling it's only going to keep on going and next thing you know the whole world's going to be completely different than the world we live in i think 20 years from now if people just all started kind of paying attention a little bit the whole place could change just every day if someone just decided to live their life completely different and do amazing benefits like just how you're doing, just like how I'm trying to do, and these types of things. It's it it can change everything, dude. Yeah, I always like to point out that I call myself an average Joe, just you know, someone that grew up with a pretty average life, just an average person, uh, just because everything I've been able to accomplish as an average person, that means anyone else in this world can accomplish. And a lot of people could probably accomplish more than I've done. Um, so if I could do just a little I've done, uh, anyone who's listening to this, just with a little bit of effort and just the desire to benefit the world, uh, I guarantee you can as well. Well, let me tell you something. I, I appreciate you coming on the podcast, Boomer. It was amazing having you, dude. Seriously. Um, I want to give you a couple minutes here to plug anything you want people to go find you on social media, find you on anything to help get this message out there, get this word spread, get this movement going because it needs to turn into something. It needs to happen soon because if we keep going at this rate, it's just it's going to keep getting uglier and uglier. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, like I said, the main thing we are going one a week, um, 
We have people share their good deeds with us on our Instagram, which is at underscore one a week. That's number one. So at underscore one a week or our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash one a week challenge. And we give out weekly gifts there. We even do some other giveaways here and there. So you can, uh, all the information of how to share your acts is in the about section of Facebook or our bio on Instagram. So find us there. If you want to listen to the podcast, it's called Unapologetically Me, a mental health podcast. We are just about on every single platform you can find podcasts. So if you just Google it, uh, you'll, you'll find it or the Apple podcast link is in our Instagram bio. And uh, yeah, we all, we have a couple other uh, pretty cool projects that will be coming out towards the end of the year. So um, if you are interested in what those might be, definitely uh, check us out, give us a follow and just, you know, start putting your good into the world and uh, amplifying it by sharing it on social media, which is a place that definitely needs more positivity. All it takes is just holding the door open for someone. Boom. Boomer, you just dropped the giant sonic boom on my podcast, man. I appreciate you you being on it, dude, for real. It was awesome. It was a pleasure having you. Definitely want to have you back on again soon. Uh, I want to see where you go with this if you decide to continue with it because I believe you can take it to the sky, dude. Oh, for sure, man. I appreciate you having me on also. Uh, I I really like the vibe of this. It's more, a lot of the ones I go on, they're more like an interview. Uh, This was more like a free-flowing conversation. I really liked it. Yeah, man. We Like I said, we can talk about aliens one minute. We can talk about something else the next. It's all just a conversation. Once you turn it into an interview, it doesn't feel real anymore. Yeah, no, this was, this was real cool. I appreciate it.